Welcome to another Ziva math video. In this video, we are going to practice one-step equations with integer operations. All of your steps to solve an equation by isolating the variable and using the inverse operation and keeping both sides of the equation balanced will remain the same. And you can find links to our videos on solving equations in the description below. As we come across equations where we're working with positive and negative numbers, we must apply all the rules to solving problems with integers to our equations. You can find the link to our integer playlist in the description below if you need to review integers. If you're ready, let's take a look at our examples. For our first example, we have x plus 6 equals 2. And we are going to work through these problems, isolating our variable and using our inverse operation. So if you want to put the box around your variable x, just so you can see where it is and what you're isolating. And again, as we're learning, this line separating our left-hand side and our right-hand side can be very helpful. So x plus 6, we have to use the inverse operation, which is to subtract. And we're going to subtract 6 from both sides because that is what is with the x. So on the left-hand side, with my x, I haven't done anything to the x. The x stays exactly how it is. I have a positive 6 minus 6, so 6 minus 6 is 0. So for now, let's put our plus 0 equals, and then on the other side, I have 2 minus 6. So we have to apply our integer rules here. I'm adding integers with different signs, which means I subtract them. 6 minus 2 is 4, and I keep the sign of the larger absolute value, which is the negative 6. So I have x plus 0 equals negative 4. x plus 0 simplifies to x. Negative 4, I didn't do anything to it in that step, so I have x equals negative 4. And then we can check these. So with um, equations, there's no reason for you to miss problems because you can always go back and check your work. We're going to take what we just got for x. We got negative 4. We're going to substitute it for x. So we get negative 4 plus 6 equals 2. And we need to make sure that that is a true statement and our work was correct. And again, you're going to have to apply your integer rules here because we have negative 4 plus 6. So if we subtract 6 minus 4 is 2, we keep the sign of the larger absolute value, which is the positive 6. We get 2 equals 2. So we know that our work x equals negative 4 is correct. For our second example, we have y minus 8 equals negative 4. We've changed the x to y just because you do need to see these problems with different variables being used. We are going to box that variable because that's what we want to isolate. And again, as you're learning, this line through the center of your problem through the equal sign is really helpful. So you can see whatever you do on the left-hand side, you are doing on the right-hand side. So we have y minus 8. We need to do the inverse operation to isolate y, which means we're going to be adding 8. We're going to add 8 to the left-hand side. Since we're adding it to the left-hand side, we also need to add it to the right-hand side. So then on our left-hand side, we've not done anything to y. y is going to stay exactly the same. Then we'll have negative 8 plus 8. Negative 8 plus 8 is 0. Equals, and on the right-hand side, we have negative 4 plus 8. That's adding integers with different signs. So we're going to take their absolute values and subtract. 8 minus 4 is 4, and we keep the sign of the number with the larger absolute value. That was our positive 8, so we have positive 4. y plus 0 simplifies to y. And then on the right-hand side in that line, we didn't do anything to the 4, so we still have a positive 4. So we get y equals 4. And we can check this one as well. We get y minus 8 equals negative 4. We found that y equals positive 4, so we're going to substitute that for the y. So we get 4 minus 8 equals negative 4. And you can use your rules for subtracting integers here to check your work. Or if you know that 4 minus 8 is negative 4, we do get negative 4 equals negative 4. 
So remember, we also have rules for subtracting integers to keep the first number, change the subtraction to addition, and change the sign of the second number. So if you want to use those rules in checking this problem, that will also give you the same answer. So for our third example, we have negative 6 equals f plus 9. I put the variable on the right-hand side this time because we need to practice with problems with the variable on the right-hand side as well. And again, this line through your equal sign, separating your left and your right, can be very helpful as you're learning. So on the right, we have f plus 9. We want to isolate the f, which means we need to subtract 9 because that's the inverse to addition. If I subtract 9 from the right, I need to subtract 9 from the left. So now that we're ready to go, we have a negative 6 plus a negative 9. A negative plus a negative is going to be a negative. 6 plus 9 is 15. So we have negative 15 on the left. We haven't done anything to f. It stays the same. We have 9 minus 9 on the right. On the left-hand side, you could also use your rules for subtracting. You're keeping the first number, changing the subtraction to addition, and the sign of the second number to solve that one as well. So now we have negative 15 equals f plus 0. f plus 0 simplifies to f, and we didn't do anything to the negative 15, so it remains the same. So we get negative 15 equals f. And we can go back and check our work to make sure that we are correct. So we got negative 15 for f. So I'm going to substitute the negative 15 for f here when I'm checking on the right. So I'm going to have negative 15 plus 9. And we want to check and make sure that that equals the negative 6. And what we have on the right is we have negative 15 plus 9. So that's adding integers with different signs. So we're going to subtract the absolute values. So 15 minus 9 is 6. And we keep the sign of the larger absolute value, which is the 15. So we're keeping the negative sign. So our 6 will be negative. So we'll have negative 6 equals negative 6. So our next example, we have 2m equals negative 6. So getting into examples with multiplying and dividing, we have 2 times m equals negative 6. m is our variable, so if you want to box that up, and if you want to add that line through your equal sign, separating your left-hand side from your right to be ready to go, we do have 2 times m. That's multiplication. Our inverse is to divide, and we're going to be dividing both sides using this line, not the division sign, and we need to divide by 2 because that's what's with our m. So dividing both sides by 2. On the left-hand side, remember those 2s simplify out, or they divide out to 1, so you get 1 times m, which is simply m. And then on the right-hand side, we have a negative divided by a positive. This is where your integer rules are going to come in. A negative divided by a positive is a negative, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So 2m equals negative 6. We get m equals negative 3. So we can also check these as well. We're going to take our m equals negative 3. We found that m is negative 3, so we're going to plug in negative 3 for m when we go to check. So when we substitute negative 3 for m, we get 2 times negative 3, and we're checking to make sure that that really is our negative 6. And again, as we're checking our problems, our integer rules come into play as well. We have a positive times a negative. A positive times a negative is a negative. We have 2 times 3 is 6. So we get negative 6 equals negative 6. So our answer of m equals 3 is correct. So one thing you want to be paying attention to with your equations is when you see positive and negative numbers so that you know you need to be careful about using your integer rule. So in this example, we have negative 25 equals negative 5b. We still want to isolate our variable b, and you're still going to find that adding this line to keep your left-hand side and your right-hand side separate so you can make sure you're doing the same operation on both sides is really helpful.
We have negative 5 times b, so we know our inverse is going to be dividing, but what are we going to divide by? Well, if we want to get b isolated, we have to divide by the negative 5, because the negative 5 is what is with the b. So I'm going to divide the right-hand side by negative 5, which means I need to also divide the left-hand side by negative 5, because I have to do the same thing to both sides. So then on the left-hand side, I have a negative divided by a negative, which is a positive. 25 divided by 5 is 5. And on the right-hand side, my negative 5s are going to simplify out, leaving me with just b. So I get 5 equals b. And I can check these as well. I have the negative 25 equals negative 5 b, and I'm going to substitute what I got for b, which was 5, in for the b when I check. So I get negative 25 equals negative 5 times the 5 that I got for b, and we're going to make sure that that does equal negative 25. So again, you've got to apply your integer rules. We have a negative times a positive, which is going to be a negative and 5 times 5 is 25. So we do get negative 25 equals negative 25. For our final example, let's look at a problem that has division in it. So we have c over 8, or c divided by 8 equals negative 3. And again, we're wanting to isolate the c, so you may want to box it and that line down the center of your equal signs so that you can be sure that what you're doing to the left-hand side, you're also doing to the right-hand side and vice versa. Well, we have c divided by 8. Our inverse is to multiply, and we're going to be multiplying both sides by 8. So on the left-hand side, those 8 simplify out, leaving us with just the c. So we get c equals, and then on the right-hand side, we have a negative 3 times a positive 8. Well, a negative times a positive is a negative, and 3 times 8 is 24. So we get c equals negative 24. And we can be checking this. So we're going to take the negative 24 that we got for c. We're going to substitute that in when we check. So we're going to have negative 24 over 8 equals negative 3, and we're checking that our negative 24 divided by 8 is negative 3. Well, a negative divided by a positive is a negative, and 24 divided by 8 is 3. So we do get negative 3 equals negative 3. So our solution of c equals negative 24 is correct. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Ziva Math for more videos.